The Second Republic of Armenia was very short-lived. After their failure to spread communism globally, the Bolshevik leaders in 1920 re-established the borders of former Russian Empire, but this time under the name of Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR. In the spring of 1920, the alliance of the Transcaucasia was formed between republics of Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan, which was called the Transfederation, and by this accord, Armenia lost its independence. By the union of the Russian Federation, Ukraine, and the Transcaucasia on December 30, 1922, the unitary, central, multi-ethnic, despotic empire was established, which lasted for 70 years and was self-destructed in December of 1991. After the instatement of Soviet rule in Armenia, the country was in total despair and chaos. Following in the steps of the Soviet Russia, private ownerships of property and industry were prohibited, such as land, factories, mineral deposits, companies, cultural and educational centers, and proclaimed property of the state. The Bolshevik Party aspired to implement the socialist ideologies of Marx and Lenin by their five-year plan of industrialism, collectivism, and, and cultural revolution. They resorted to cruel means to accomplish their dream, and many people fell victim to their autocratic region in all the republics, including Armenia. In the mid-twenties and the thirties, the foundation of Industrial institutions became established in Armenia with a more emphasis on chemical industry. People were working hard and even sacrificing their well-being for the advancement of the country, but their individual political rights were not respected. Intellectuals were the ones who suffered the most from the socialist government. This regime was not permissive of ideologies other than socialism, and the government was not open to criticism. People who deviated from the principles of communism were actively persecuted. Under the pretense of people's enemy, thousands of people were exiled and subjected to mass executions. These were talented scholars, public and political figures, generals and spiritual leaders. These atrocities reached their peak under the oppressive rule of Stalin in 1937, when only in Armenia tens of thousands of innocent people were killed. Armenia participated in World War II as part of the Soviet Union. 500,000 Armenians were enlisted in the Soviet Army. Six Armenian military divisions were created, with the most famous one being the 89th Tamanian Division which fought from the Caucasian mountains to Berlin. The Armenian battalions participated in most of the important battles like the Battle of Moscow, Stalingrad, Kursk, Caucasus, Leningrad, Rim, and the liberation of Ukraine. In Armenia, more than 300 different types of ammunition were being manufactured for the Russian army. About 100,000 Armenians in diaspora also participated in World War II as part of the alliances. In total, Armenians had 330,000 casualties. 104 Armenian soldiers were given the Soviet Union hero title like Nelson Stepanian and Hovhannes Bagramian twice, and 27 became cavaliers by receiving the three medals of glory. After the World War II, within few years, the economy was restored, and in the 50s, it was already at the pre-war level and continued to advance. The economy of Armenia was part of the collective economy of the Soviet Union. Many new factories and workshops were constructed. Power stations and water networks were built. The biggest constructional projects during the years of 1946-1985 were the 48-kilometer water tunnel of Arpa Sevan, which took two years to complete, and 
the nuclear power station of Armenia. The 60s was a period of rebirth of nationalistic ideologies. New generation of Armenians conscious of their past and present aspirations started to dream and paved the road to free and independent state. It was in April 1965, at the 50th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, when a mass demonstration was organized in Yerevan, which was the first in the history of the Soviet Union, and a monument was built in the memory of the victims of the genocide. Another such example was the celebrations dedicated to the 2750th anniversary of the foundation of the city of Yerevan, where many guests were present, including Armenians from the diaspora. By the illegal decision of the Caucasian Bureau in July of 1921, Karabakh Artsakh was joined to Azerbaijan. The Armenians of Karabakh, who constituted 94% of the population, lived under the sovereignty of Azerbaijan for 70 years. However, during this time period, the people of Artsakh raised their complaints on several accounts and demanded justice. In February of 1988, the Assembly of the Autonomous Region of Mountainous Karabakh, based on the Constitutional Act which secures the identity of nations, they formulated a resolution to free Karabakh and join to the Republic of Armenia. The whole of Armenian nation supported the decision of this assembly. Thus, Karabakh Artsakh movement was born. However, this step aggravated the Azerbaijanis and the central government and with the permission of the two governments in February 1988 in the town of Sumgait of Azerbaijan, the Armenian residents were massacred. The violent masses tortured and killed 30,000 Armenian civilians. This was followed by the massacres and mass deportations of Armenians of Gyanja, Baku, Shamkhor, Getashen, Khanlar and other regions. However, these events did not stop the just demands of the Armenians. On the contrary, they became more determined and organized and created the Armenian Committee of the Karabakh Movement. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in December of 1991 and the declaration of independent state by the former Soviet republics, the Karabakh conflict grew into full-fledged military war. The Azerbaijani government tried to empty Karabakh by forcible deportation of Armenians. Therefore, the Armenians of Artsakh took up arms to defend their land and their right to decide their future. The Armenians of Armenia supported their compatriots of Karabakh, and in May 1992, Shushi city located in the heart of Artsakh was liberated. Many other villages and regions were, were liberated later on. Many brave soldiers were killed during this war, like Tatul Kirpeyan, Simeon Achikyozian, Monte Melkonian, Shot Gulian, Movses Gorgisian, and many more who sacrificed their lives for their fatherland, the next generations, and the just cause of the Armenian nation. In December 1991, the people of Karabakh held a referendum and unanimously declared the region of mountains Karabakh a free and independent state. Through several democratic elections, members of the parliament and the government were elected and the national flag, coat of arms, and the national anthem were decided. In 1995, the parliament of the Republic of Mountainous Karabakh elected Robert Kocharyan president. Today, the Republic of Mountains Karabakh continues to struggle to defend its rights and to achieve international acknowledgement of its independence. After the collapse of the Soviet Union and the progress of the Karabakh movement, Armenians were also working towards the independence of the Soviet Armenian Republic. One of the dedicated figures of this movement was Moses Gorgisian. He was the first to raise the Armenian flag among the people. He was also actively participating in the battles at the Armenian-Azerbaijani borders. He died in Yerashkhavan fighting for the glory of his people. In 1989, the Armenian National Movement 
was formed on August 4th of 1990. The new parliament of Armenia elected the president of the Armenian National Movement, ANM Party, Levante Petrosian, the president of the Supreme Council of Armenia, and Vazgen Manukian, the prime minister. On August 23rd of 1990, Soviet Republic of Armenia became Republic of Armenia. The national emblems, flag, coat of arms, and anthem were reinstated. The collectivism of the Soviet regime was abolished. The Soviet land industry was changed to a market industry. The national classic parties, ARF, Hanchakian, and Social Democratic Ramkavar Party returned to the bosom of their motherland. Despite the fulfillment of a long-awaited dream, that is, independence of Armenia, the social life of the nation declined drastically after the collapse of the Soviet Union. A referendum was held on September 21, 1991, where 94% of the population voted for a free, democratic, and independent Republic of Armenia. Finally, the dream of all Armenians was realized, and after 70 years of communism, the independence of Armenia was reestablished. On October 16, 1991, presidential elections were held for the first time, and Levante Petrosian was elected president of the Republic of Armenia. After a short period, the Republic of Armenia gained international recognition as an independent state and became a member of the United Nations. On July 5, 1995, the Armenian people voted for the instatement of the Constitution, which was a cornerstone in the Armenian history. In order to improve the structure of the administrative bodies of the government, new districts and regions were created. By unification and the restructuring of more than 40 districts of the Republic of Armenia, 11 regions were created. The capital of Yerevan became a region as well. Other constitutional and democratic changes also took place. By this way, Armenia relieved itself from the collectivism of Soviet Union and is on the road to free and independent state, and as a member of the international society, aspires to accomplish a free, progressive, democratic, and just government. Today, the President of the Republic of Armenia is Robert Kocharyan, 